school. Um, this is my L for L. L's in love video. L's for lessons, L's for losses. So, because it's such a hot topic, um, we've been over this. I've been divorced for over a year now. And, but this was like my whole first full year single. And I haven't been single since I was 17. And I don't know if y'all just enjoy asking this question or like y'all enjoy being a my heartbreak. But divorce, 23 year old and divorced. It's hard out here. But I'm not bitter Becky as much as I was to start the year. So there's improvement. Um, and I don't know, I guess I wanted to just share with you guys how my first year single went. It went. <laughs> but I learned mad shit about myself and just like why my marriage didn't work out and why I made the decisions I made and why I make the decisions I make, make in terms of choosing partners and choosing who I want to deal with and you know like you know I have a little bit of a how it's here <laughs> depending on who you ask but you know like just figuring out what I want and what I believe in and what that relationship looks like for me like what that happily ever looks like for me um but also like I was dumb young like I was with my ex-husband since I was 17 years old and I dated him for like three years we got married for senior year and then we got divorced a year after I turned pro um and that's why I do love him to death hopefully I'll be able to go to his wedding when he find a bitch that just changes his life or whatever and I have a handy dandy demonstration to learn about to show you what I love okay so we're gonna say that these two cups are people. This is you and whoever you choose to deal with, like this is you. So right now, as you can see, they're empty. We're gonna say that this is like self-esteem, love, encouragement, happiness, positivity, like everything that people pour into you, right? So let me open up this happiness. So I'm actually thirsty. But anywho, so basically, as you grow up, your parents tell you you're wonderful, they love you, whatever. You do well in things, you pray, you find God, you build your self-esteem. And so, in reality, this is how you want to look, right? You want to be full to the brim. You want to be content being by yourself like just completely content. But sometimes bad things happen. You go through things. Society tells you you're ugly because you don't look a certain way. You lose your job. So this is how you look though, right? Like you're not fully filled, but you're, you're chilling. You're okay. So then you meet another person. This person has the same life. They grow up, their parents love them. They have self-esteem, they build self-esteem, whatever, 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 whatever. You do. So, you see, they're built too. So in reality, what you want is for it to be two filled people trying to deal with each other. Two whole people. And then you see what happens when you're with somebody. You give them a little bit. You give them a little bit. But when it's two whole people, you see, they're always full. The person is always cool. Now, what often happens with young love, what happened in my marriage, and it's honestly not even an age thing, it's really just a you thing, and knowing yourself and being completely ready to be in a relationship, is it's to have people. Now watch what happens when you try to pour into another person when you're not fully really for yourself. I'm empty. Okay, babe, come back. It don't work. Like somebody's always empty. It don't work. When you try to love somebody before you fully hold. First of all, I want y'all to know that I made the biggest mess trying to do this demonstration for y'all. But you know, y'all deserve it. So look, when you're not fully whole and you try to love somebody, you give what you don't have. Like you can't do it, right? You can't give what you don't have. So you empty yourself out trying to love somebody else, trying to be there, everything. Like the goal isn't to find someone that completes you. That's not it. That shit's a myth, that shit's terrible. That's called codependency. The goal is to find somebody that makes you better, that makes you into your full self, that helps you reach that pinnacle of being the best version of yourself, while also simultaneously growing with you. That's the goal. 
Because if we're both full, I can give you as much as I have because I have it to give. And I know that you're going to replenish me in, in, in turn. But if I don't love myself, how can I teach you how to love me? If I'm not comfortable in my own skin, how can I be comfortable with you? I realized a lot of my relationship um, was me loving a title. I love being a wife. I love being a wife. Like, I loved it. I lo I'm a caregiver. Like, that's how I love. I take care of people, so I love taking care. But in reality, like, a lot of it was us hiding from our insecurities and our flaws by diving deeper into each other. And I learned a lot about myself just being single this year, seeing how I deal with people. Like, I have terrible tastes. Like, I, not even, let me not say that, because the people I dealt with, the people I deal with, they're always, they're amazing people, but I don't, I'm drawn to people that need me. I'm drawn to people that I can take care of and it becomes a one-sided relationship. Or I'm drawn to people that don't need me at all. Um, like my relationship with monogamy is weird because I didn't grow up seeing it. I didn't grow up in a in a situation where that was normal. Like my dad's on his third wife, my mother. I've never seen my mother in a relationship outside of my father. Um, and I barely remember that. So I didn't see that shit growing up. And it wasn't necessarily something I, I subscribed to. And I don't even know if I believe in marriage at this point. Um, and I know y'all probably like, what the fuck? How you not believe in marriage and you were married? I was, I believed in him. So I could have jumped on a bridge. He said, bitch, let's jump off a bridge. I'd have been like, baby, let's jump. What? Which bridge? Like, that's just who I'm in love. And so I'm learning to not only maintain my identity, but also that I don't have to sacrifice my goals. I don't have to sacrifice my personhood when I'm in a relationship. And the goal should be for us both to move forward, for us both to build together. Um, so I don't know. I always tell people like, especially young girls, like it's so many people, it's so many men out here that would love you, but it don't mean shit if you don't love yourself, right? Like it don't mean nothing because you're still going to be empty. If you're empty, you're going to be empty after he pours into you. After he tells you you're the most beautiful girl in the world, treats you right, do whatever you want to do, you're still going to be empty at the end of the day because you're not good by yourself. That's been 2018. Being single, figuring out what that looks like for me, maybe being a bit promiscuous. <sighs> Depends who you ask. I don't know. I don't know. Trying to date out. Not really. Date. I spent 2018 <laughs> being a 24-year-old divorcee and living my motherfucking life. But 2019, I just I learned a lot about myself and how I want to deal with men and who's allowed in my space and who's allowed in my energy. So 2019 is gonna be a little different, but it's a growing process, a learning process. I'm sure my king is out there somewhere, and you know maybe I know him already, maybe I don't, but. For me, the end goal necessarily isn't marriage and the picky white fence. That may not be what my happily ever after that looks like. I kind of imagine like it just being me and my me and my person like rocking out forever, and we know what we are. And people ask us when we got married, and we say a different time all the time and lie and shit. Like, but it's just us. Like, you know, like I want a best friend. I want somebody that's gonna hold me down, and I want to be able to do that to do that to them in turn. I don't think love is possessive. I think it's free. I never want somebody to make a decision out of obligation. Like, I don't want my partner to decide to not do something because they feel obligated to me. I want them to not do something because they choose me over and over. I think the most beautiful thing about love and about marriage and about monogamy and any sort of commitment is the fact that this person chooses you daily, hourly, by the minute, by the second. The fact that they continually choose you. Like, that shit's beautiful. Um, and I'm sure I'll find that shit, you know, or I won't. And I'm content with just rocking out with me and my two dogs, because y'all know I'm a crazy dog lady. <laughs> and my doggies love me the fuck, and I love them, and I love myself, and that's all that matters. So yeah, L's, bitch. But you know, L's is lessons, lessons in love. So yeah, stay prayed up. Love yourself first. 